This is my history of Aprilia ownership over the last 15 years or so, the fun I've had on these things and the not so fun events I've had on them as well. Growing up, about the only bikes I really knew of were Harleys and uh, I guess the Japanese crotch rockets. I never even heard of an Aprilia motorcycle till around maybe 2000 or so. I bought a car from a guy behind North Star Mall here in San Antonio and he told me that he was going to start carrying Aprilias. So I went by on the Harley one day and he said, you know, come back when I've got some demo models and take one out for a drive. I never did. And then, you know, a year or two later, I happened to be in Austin for a work meeting or something and I saw an Aprilia dealer up in the North part. And so I stopped in to look at him. And what I couldn't get over is I was used to Harleys where I kind of got good at controlling the back wheel skids like you do on a bicycle as a kid, right? Where you hit the back brake and that's how you control it. And to see these massive front Brembos on this thing, I thought, how in the fuck are you supposed to do that, use these, without sliding the front end out? I just, I couldn't get my head wrapped around it. I had a buddy in Austin about that time too that he was a sport bike guy and he said, look, if you're gonna try a sport bike, you might like an Aprilia because they have a V-twin at the time. It was that Rotax V-twin. And he said it might be a little bit closer in sound and feel to you and more torquey like what you're used to with the Harley V-twins. So time goes by. I'm in Florida. I've got the chopper shop. Happen to be dating a cute little gal from the beach. One of the things I took away is, you know, for me, kind of a hot little chick. She was really into sport bikes. And I thought, well, at the shop, I have choppers and the Harley. But maybe I'm missing out on some business because I don't have any sport bikes that I can show off my work. I really didn't want the standard cookie cutter Japanese bikes. So I started looking at Aprilia's again and I found a used one in either like Idaho or Utah. It was a 2000 RSV Malay and it was this god awful yellow unfortunately. But Everything else looked good about it. The guy seemed decent. I should have pushed for a pre-sale inspection. I asked him about it and he's like, nah, everything's fine. I can do one if you want. And I always did them with the cars, but it was one of those things where I was a little bit too anxious and I really should have got the pre-sale on it. I'll explain why in a minute. So the bike showed up. I think I paid like six grand for it or so. The bike showed up at our fab shop in Jacksonville and it wouldn't even start. So I had to jump the battery get it going and then ride it home and um, so I rode it home from the fab shop and besides the awful yellow the bike was kind of cool looking and that didn't sound exactly like a Harley by any stretch but still a nice v-twin rumble to it and uh, it just you know it was a very different seating position it felt very different for me got it home now Tracer my buddy in Florida had a yellow the VFR or something we called it the burrow but he had this yellow VFR and I'd rag him constantly for driving this awful yellow bike. So of course, once I had the yellow bike, he couldn't wait to get pictures. And I was dating some cheerleader at the time who was unfortunately dating like two, three other dudes. So I think the inside of her crotch must have looked like Spider-Man shooting range. But anyway, all that aside, me and her rode out to his place. He was waiting outside with a camera just to get a picture of me on the yellow bike. He and I both knew that it wasn't gonna stay yellow for long. So I couldn't wait to roll it into the shop and get it painted a decent color. I was used to Harley's choppers where you have basically two fenders, an oil tank, and a gas tank, right? That Aprilia, I think there was like 13, 15 pieces that came off of it. And I wanted to do something almost chopperish looking, so I did it all in flat black. I did leave the silver underbelly with the Aprilia stickers on it, painted the rest of it flat black, I did like some white skeleton hands coming out of the vents on both sides, um, a pelvis bone on the tail with lip prints for kiss my ass, and then where the helmet recess was, I did a, a skull in there. So I really enjoyed how the, the look of the bike came out after doing all the paintwork. I had a Sportster at the time, and I kind of wondered, how's this going to be going back and forth between the two? You got to remember what you're riding, because the Sportster, you're going to use the rear brakes, and on the Aprilia, you got to use the front brakes. The acceleration of that Aprilia was like nothing I was used to. I was following Trace down like, I guess it'd be First Street right alongside the water one night at the beach. And in first gear, I just, you know, cracked the throttle like halfway and that tank slammed up against my chest and back down before I knew what happened. 
And the brakes were also a whole lot touchier than what I was used to. I was going down Bay Meadows, following a car. I wasn't paying as much attention as I should be. It was in stop and go traffic. And this car locked up its brakes. And fortunately I reacted and hit the front brakes. And when I went forward, the tail come up off the ground. And I remember looking down and right below my eyesight was the ass end of the trunk. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna snap my neck. <laughs> but uh, it, it settled back down, slammed the tail back on the ground. And so fortunately that was a, a lesson in how good they actually break. The power of that thing though was, I think around 128 horsepower or something. But again, it was way more than what I was used to. And such a lighter bike too. I remember taking off from a bar one night over by Southside somewhere and, you know, ran it through the gears and even shifted into the third, the front end coming up on me. It was just a ton of torque. Amazing performance for that thing. Way more than what you need for riding on the streets of Jacksonville. But we'd find ourselves going down A1A to St. Augustine. I had that doctor chick on the back and her friend on the back with Trace. And, you know, doing like 130 plus, um, just amazing performance. I was following a racer buddy of mine too. We were going to Jennings Track to watch some races, and it was foggy as hell out. So I'm following him, and he was actually, he raced too. And all I see is his taillight, and it was like a, a sharp turn, and all I saw was his taillight go off like this. And I had to slam the brakes on the Aprilia to barely make that turn. So it was more than what I had any business being on at the time. After getting the Aprilia, Tracer stopped by the shoebox apartment I had at the time. Uh, it was around my birthday, I think, actually, with a, a box. And he said, since Harley Trash Like You doesn't believe in safety gear besides, what do you say, uh, jeans and uh, <laughs> wife beaters and shades, basically. He said, I know you don't have enough sense to buy one, so here's your first one. It was a little icon uh, black helmet, so that was my first helmet. And soon after that, you start to realize, yeah, it's probably a good idea to have the gear. So I ended up with you know, the mesh jacket and some gloves and boots and stuff. I really enjoyed riding the bike. The only real headache I kind of had with it, the, I think the starter relay I had to change one time because it wasn't starting and I ran, ran like a heavier ground all the way back or something. It had a hydraulic clutch on it and that hydraulic slave cylinder down by the engine, it just failed. Uh, I had to replace it, rebuild it, whatever, a couple times. Finally, I got an aftermarket one from AF1 Racing here in Texas. Shipped out to Florida and replaced it with that. Then I was riding to the tattoo shop out at the beach one night on it, and it started making some horrendous noise, and it it grenaded. The engine didn't lock up, but everything went bad, and the lights came on the dash and everything. So I ended up getting to the tattoo shop and then went and got a trailer and hauled it back later. But when I took it apart, what had happened is it thrown the front rod bearing and so you could grab that front piston and just move it freely because the, the, the front bearing was basically shot. I ended up finding a used engine through the Aprilia forum for like 1300 bucks, I think, and it was in really good shape. So I did the swap, but when you're used to changing a Harley engine, you have like, what, three or four hoses and three or four wires. There must have been like 25 different wires and hoses and things I had to disconnect and reassemble. And so I taped every one of them because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And it was, you know, unlike a Harley engine where you just pull it out the side, this thing you had to like put a come along from the rafters and hold the engine and drop it down and then lift the frame off. It was, again, very different than building choppers for me. But I got it all put back together, ran well again. And then shortly after that, I ended up having the first open heart surgery. So when I got out of surgery and got back from Colorado, I ended up tearing apart the Aprilia and the Sportster just to keep the two bikes disabled so that I wouldn't be stupid and go ride them too early while the sternum was still healing. I had them back together by March for bike week. So I did take, uh, I think Sunshine and I took the Aprilia down one night and then I took the Sportster down once or twice that week as well. So back on the bikes, and I think with that time what I did is I took that underbelly and instead of the silver it was, I painted it red and put the white sticker. So I really liked the look of it after doing that mod to it. The other thing I had to do about that time with it is the rear shock, I think it was a sax that was on it. Sunshine was on the back with me and we were going around to Clover and it just felt like something didn't you know, feel right back there. And I got to looking at it and somehow the, like the dust boot had broke and it just, everything was messed up. So I sent it to, I think, Traction Dynamics up in Atlanta, if I remember right. And they rebuilt it for my size. I guess the spring was 
way undersized for me. I don't know how anybody but a jockey would have been riding it. They got it all set up for me, rode great after that. Every year, Tracer and his buddies took a trip up to the Dragon in North Carolina, and they'd go ride the mountains. And he'd always ask me, you know, if I wanted to go, and of course I was always too busy with the shop or whatever. The year after surgery though, the, see I had surgery in November, so the next September, they were taking a trip and he asked me if I wanted to go, expecting me to say no, and I'm like, yeah, I'll do it this time. So we rode our bikes from Jacksonville, eight hours to uh, Franklin, North Carolina. We threw our shit in the hotel. It was probably 40 minutes we'd been out on the mountain roads and I was keeping up with him pretty good. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I had no business being on a bike like that, especially in curves like that. But I thought, fuck it, he's older than me. If he can do it, I can do it. So I stayed right on his ass. And about that time, I was in the right lane. It was a tightening radius. And I started braking and I felt the front end washing out. I knew not to target fixate, so I was trying to watch where I wanted to go. But once I felt that front end laying out, I knew I was fucked, right? So then I kind of looked at what I was going to hit while it was just a drop off down the mountain. So I basically ejected the bike, went like this and felt myself sliding across the oncoming lane of traffic. Thank goodness nobody was coming out here. It'd be a hood ornament. The bike ended up going over the side, down the mountainside. I ended up laying on the little three foot grass shoulder with one arm hanging off the side. And I looked down and it was a, just a, a super steep drop. So the bike basically went over and slid down and landed between like a, against a tree and the hill here or the mountainside here. So it was about 20 feet down the mountain against this tree, standing on his feet. Trace finally comes, turns around, realizes I disappeared from his mirror. He comes back and he comes back and he gets off his bike and he sees me sitting on the shoulder and he looks down and real calmly says, well, why'd you park down there? <laughs> Smart ass. So a local guy came by with a tow rope and I put it around the forks and I kind of walked it up and he pulled it up. And yeah, it had a bent up tank from where it hit the tree and it knocked like the blinker and mirror off the right side. And I think I was able to get the, like a fender washer to make the mirror mount good enough to get by for the trip. But I rode it all weekend uh, through the, you know, went up the Dragon the next day and whatever else, but Cherilla Skyway, I had a blast on that thing. And that was really where you learn what a bike like that's made for, even with my poor abilities. So we rode out the rest of the weekend and then rode eight hours back home to Jacksonville. So about a year after that, we moved back to Texas and the old 2000 probably was getting a little long in the tooth, started looking around for something else. And I test drove one of the new RSV4s, which I loved them since they came out. Um, I test drove one of those on a Friday from AF1 Racing when they were New Braunfels and they were super easy to work with. They're great guys up there. Uh, they, I think, offered to do like a race ECU and a tail tidy, whatever else and stuff. And I loved the bike. And the next day I test drove the BMW S1000RR. And I ended up buying the BMW at the time because I already had one Aprilia in the garage. So I guess I wanted something different. And I, and I love the BMW, nothing against that of course. But I ended up selling that Aprilia and I didn't have one for a long time. And then eventually at some point later, the BMW, I sent it to a self-proclaimed mechanic that basically fucked me out of thousands of dollars and held my bike for a hostage for a couple of years. So while I was pissed off waiting for that, I thought, you know, why not buy an Aprilia so I at least have something to ride and it'll kind of make me forget that, you know, my bike's being violated up north. So I went to AF1 Racing and they had a, it was an 18 RSV4 1000RR. And I mean, they'd come so far since that old Malay that I had, of course. Loved the bike, bought that one, and really enjoyed it for a few months. <laughs> Took it out to Colorado, rode up Rocky Mountain National Park, and so, you know, it was way up at the top. Beautiful scenery, and I tell you, that bike was such a blast out there. I had so much fun. I did catch a bird in the shoulder at 130 one day. I went off the road at Buckhorn. There's some loose gravel and I was coming around a little bit too hot. Fortunately, it was just went into the grass and I didn't hit any tree, but that was pucker factor high. The last day I went up Poudre Canyon with that thing early where there's like almost no cars. And I think the computer on it said that for those, what was it, 25 miles? I think I averaged 60 miles an hour through all those curves and everything. So 
I was screaming through there, but the bike rode so nice through there. I just can't say enough about how much I enjoyed riding that bike in those mountains that weekend. So I survive all that shit. I get back to Texas and the next weekend, I think it was Labor Day Sunday that weekend. Sunday morning, it was still dark. It was like six or whatever, still dark out. And I was north of Bernie heading out the back roads and I came around the turn and I pinned the throttle. I was tucked all the way in. And I'm used to seeing deer because I grew up in Iowa where they're all over the place. So you have to learn how to see the eyes sparkling in the dark. This fucking thing, I didn't see shit until it was like two feet in front of my headlight. And it was in mid-spring. So it's two feet in front of me, mid-spring. I never even hit the brakes, which is probably good because it smashed the headlight housing. It, I felt it glance over my head because it jarred my teeth bad enough. I felt it. So if I would have been hitting the brakes and sitting up two inches higher, it probably would have snapped my neck. But it was a seven point buck, killed it. It ended up dead on the side of the road. I thought I was gonna be able to keep it upright, but you know, even after I cleared the deer, I lost it and I went ragdolling down the highway. And I remember coming to a stop, seeing my bike slide another 25 yards away or so in the grass. So it knocked the shield off the helmet. I found that, went down, picked up the bike, the transmission was locked up and I was able to just, you know, fight it until I got it into neutral. And I just kept holding the start button down and throttling it until it finally started again. Now it was all beat up and there was grass hanging everywhere and shit. But I only had, the only lights left was like one blinker. So I put a blinker on, hoping it would keep me from getting run over from someone behind me because it's still dark out. And I just limped home at like 20 mile an hour with it, got through Bernie. Yeah, some dude in a Prius like flashes at me and he gets next to me and said, hey, you know your, your headlights out. It's like, yeah, asshole, I just had a fucking deer out there. Couldn't see all the grass and broken plastics. Douchebag. I got the bite back and like every hour I heard worse and worse new pain somewhere. But I remember making it up to Austin. I had a date with some Russian chick up there that afternoon. So I had a few drinks to try to numb it. But man, that was a rough week. Um, you know, I talked to F1 Racing about it. And yeah, you could probably replace the little visible plastics, but you have no idea like that kind of a crash at those, you know, I was doing well over a hundred. So you know that there's some damage somewhere to things like the frame or the forks or the, now who knows what it did to the engine, but if you think about losing it and that bike slamming the pavement at that speed, you know something's messed up. And I thought, why spend all that money to repair it only to have a bike that you don't really trust anyway. And so when talking to Mike up there and stuff, we're like, look, it just ain't worth it. The way I ride, I need something I can rely on. So it just made more sense to total the bike. So I celebrated surviving that wreck with buying the 1100 RF factory. And that's this one here. Now I'd had the carbon wheels ordered for the thousand because it had the bright red wheels, which I really wasn't a fan of. So I'd ordered the BSTs. However, my deer hunting accident prevented me from ever putting those wheels on that bike. Fortunately, they fit the factory bike. So once I got this bike and the wheels came in, I put them on there after I wore the original tires down. So I've done the BST wheels. I also, the suspension on this, you know, I'm 220 pounds. I'm a lot bigger than the Italian jockey. We put a bigger spring on the back, tried doing the preload on the front. It just wasn't enough to get everything balanced right. I ended up having to raise the rear three millimeters and it threw the geometry all off. You'd go, you know, anything over 110, 20 in, a, in sweepers and the back end was all over the place. So I ended up finally biting the bullet, replacing the springs and putting the fat ass springs in the front. And now I've got everything set where the suspension is great. I love it. Uh, I do have a 520 sprocket and chain conversion kit I'll put on here one of these days. And I put the zero gravity shield on it as well. Otherwise, it's just been little cosmetic stuff like my Lamborghini ripoff stickers and little axe badges and the F11 stuff and that. I wondered when I got this 1100 factory if it would be noticeably faster than the thousand I'd had before. And yeah, it's 10% bigger engine, I get that, but it was surprisingly more powerful. It just, it was more noticeable than what I realized it would be. So it's got a ton of power, sounds awesome. The V4 configuration is a great balance of the low end torque of a V, um, but still having, you know, the high rev capability, high power and all that. One of the scariest times on this bike, although thank fuck I haven't wrecked it yet, is I was going out through the hill country and I was coming over a crest 
I didn't ever think that I'd actually be able to do this. I wasn't trying to, but as I came over a crest, I felt the front bars just go limp on me. And I was like, oh fuck, I got the front wheel off the ground coming over it. And you can't iron grip it because then when you come down, you might crash, but you can't just let go or else, you know, it might lay sideways and then you'll crash. So you have to just kind of hold on loosely and hope like hell you don't crash. Got down and realized that my, my throttle hand was still pinned and I had to like focus on, okay, let go of the throttle, roll it forward. Finally got down to the end and barely braked for the next turn. And when I got in, I looked at the computer and it said max speed was 173. So that's what I was doing like over the crest, 173 mile an hour unicycle. Good thinking. I've had a ton of fun on Aprilia's over the last what, decade and a half or whatever I've been enjoying them. And this is definitely the king of them all. So I'm really loving this bike and uh, just got to make sure I don't do anything stupid like go deer hunting with it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.